Boom. Hi there guys, welcome back to another episode of XL Garage. So, where are we now with the uh, LS Swap into the GT86? Hopefully, we're going to be moving on to wiring this episode, which is, of course, a pretty exciting one. It means we can get the ECU in, means we can get a base map installed, it means we can do lots of stuff and eventually start the car. Uh, I think I'll probably end up doing this in multiple parts because I think it's going to be a pretty big task. There's some bits I'm going to do off camera, just little fiddly bits that it's just going to be a pain to film, so I'm just going to smash those out of camera but i'll show i'll bring you guys along for the big bits and as you can see the workshop's a bit of a mess to say the least so i'm going to bring you up to speed because so much has happened uh since the last episode um where you saw me kind of failing to install the uh front accessory drive so let me flip the camera around give you a little show around and then we'll uh start talking about wiring right so starting off on the interesting bits the actual engine itself um obviously as you can see you've got a new water pump got a uh, Tensioner, alternator is going to go down there. I'm just waiting for the bracket to come. Uh, started grounding the engine a bit. Um, bu 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 bu. Got my oil pressure switch relocation fitted. Got some coolant lines for the heater. This is the heater core back here. And got some 130 degree bends and some 90 degree elbows, which brings them out around here. Of course, they're quite close to the headers. So I'm going to heat sleeve them and I'm going to be wrapping and eventually coating the headers. So yeah, a little bit area of concern, but oh well. And then eventually these will come off another 90 into the water pump. Cooling system wise, there's the neck for the top of the radiator. And as you can see, 90 degree of that, 90 degree of that, and they should meet up quite nicely. The bottom one has to go down here and end up somewhere around here. So once the radiator is in, I'll sort that out. What else has happened? Not a whole lot. I've found one wire, which I messed up when I did my kind of wire diet back here. I got rid of the AC pump signal wire. So amazing. Um, got an AC pump, no way to wire that up. I think what I'm gonna do, essentially the wire would have come down here, round then into the fuse box. So I might be able to find it in here, but in all honesty, I'll be able to find it for sure if I separate the fuse box, pull it off the bottom of the relay that it comes out from, and then just doot, 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 easy. Nice quick route. I uh, also need to remove this anyway. This is the old alternator charge cable and signal cable. Obviously no point having those because the alternator is going to be down there, not there. So I'll run a new one. I mean, the harness comes with a new one and then I'll just run a big fat cable up to the battery. The original starter motor cables, I've poked around down here because the starter motor lives there. So I need to give it power, ground it and so on. Uh, but we're going to be kind of tackling all that in this episode, obviously the wiring episode. need to drill a big hole in the firewall over there, but get onto that momentarily. What else has happened? Well, my plans of the master cylinder here, unfortunately fell through. It's not too much of a shame because it's only about 50 pounds or something and a little lowers fitting, which is about tenner. Um, but essentially it stuck out way too far from the firewall. It was sticking out like here. And if we go over to the engine, you can see I do not have that much room. My other options were to space this whole assembly away from the firewall, but then it would move the brake pedal. Um, you know, perhaps I could bend the brake pedal, blah, 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 blah. Or I could just get myself a new must cylinder. This is one from Tilton. And obviously that's adjustable and I can mount that wherever I want. Um, might make bleeding a bit of a pain at being upside down, but there's no reason it shouldn't work if it's bled well. Just need to make a mount for that. That'll go inside there. And I need to bend this up mount that instead of here. But that's kind of the update. As you can see, workshop looks like an absolute mess, but this is what we're here for today, the wiring harness. So let's start unpacking this. Uh, we can start going through it all. Um, gonna get a hole in the firewall. Uh, there's loads to do, absolutely loads. So I'm not sure exactly what order we're gonna go in, but I'll bring you guys along for it regardless. Let's dive into it. Right, here we are. So kind of the judgment day of getting the wiring harness into the car is drilling a great big hole in the firewall for it. Obviously something I've been dreading a little bit. It's a big hole in the uh, big hole in my car. Will the drill bit even work? So on and so forth. As you can see, made it quite easy for myself, just so I absolutely do not miss. 
Clear instructions are always very important, I feel. But what I'm not gonna do is show you guys the uh, the process. It's probably gonna take quite a long time. I have to run the drill bit quite slowly so it doesn't dull and actually eventually gets through the sheet metal. So to speed things up for you guys on uh, watching the actual hole get made, I thought, here's one I made earlier. We just take this and I'll pop it here. Perfect. Let's put some wires through it, shall we? Let's hop in the car. Right, so here we go. Had a little bit of a jump here. Had a friend come around and give me a bit of a hand getting the cabling in. It currently comes out the firewall hole. Obviously the grommet's not pushed in yet, but then it splits off into three paths. You've got uh, kind of all the optional bits and uh, a few other things. You've got the right-hand side, or at least my right-hand side, and you've got the left-hand side down here. We've also got the final piece of the front accessory drive on here, the alternator. So obviously uh, I've got all the cabling for that. I just need to run one big fat battery charge cable up to the battery area. And coming inside, I've been working away in here. The easy bit was I got my gauge mounted. I had a friend 3D print me this uh, kind of gauge mount that goes in the vent there and still allows air to come through around the gauge. And the cabling for that just goes, pokes through the center console. But I think you'll agree that looks pretty clean. It's pretty smart there, should give me all the information I need. But then coming around to the business side, it's an absolute mess. Um, just having to pin in a few of the cables for the Haltech, things like the throttle, pedal wires, uh, ignition source, you know, things like that. Uh, there's a few others to go in, can and so on. And I've just been using these, uh, I've been trying to do it all with some nice clean little plugs. And truth be told, they're absolute bastards to do. Those three are for the uh, throttle. I still need to do another one for the can and I'll probably just solder the ignition together because, uh, well, only two wires but they're absolute bastards because i've been using these like cheap uh ebay kind of plug kit and they're just really crap and uh, i've had this for a little while but never really used it in any kind of capacity and you know it's one of those things buy cheap buy twice and all that hopefully the pins are seated nicely in those plugs if they're not then i'm going to be chasing problems for ages i think plans are in here i'm going to get this all tidied up obviously finish off that I think I'm going to mount the ECU somewhere, perhaps on the back of the glove box or perhaps on the inside, just to you know, make that easier. I've got the wide band, the wide band kit down there, the wires for that go around here and they drop down um, where it's nice and easy to get to the exhausts, obviously. Got a fuse box to mount. Got lots of bits, absolute mess in there. We'll come back to that when it's a bit tidied up. But getting back to this, I think the last thing really is to start getting all these wires plugged in. So I think it's time for a plug-in montage. Right, so as you just saw in this little montage, got a few of the electronics plugged in now. So I've got um, all the core packs plugged into their loom, which goes here, and where is it? Here. Uh, now obviously I'm gonna wait till the inlet manifold's on to plug those in. Uh, I've got a couple more that need to wait for the inlet manifold, namely, um, well, all of the injectors, the throttle body, all the injectors on this side, obviously because the injectors are currently part of the inlet manifold but I've got the crank angle sensor, knock sensor, I've uh, got the cam sensor, also very important, water temp, alternator, uh, knock sensor on this side. All the way buried down by the gearbox, I have the a optional DPO output, which I'm gonna be using for the uh, reverse lockout. Uh, I've also got the intake air temp down here, I can't plug in yet, because no intake pipe. So all that's really left here is also to get the battery connections done so once there's a battery and i can do that um and then i can perhaps even start 
programming the ECU. Still got a few other bits before I can start the car though. Still got the big alternator cable I need to extend. Got starter cables and the starter I need to install. But coming inside, well, it looks pretty normal in here, right? Apart from that little cable dangling down. And that's because in here, I have installed the ECU. If we open up the glove box, there it is. Let me open this a little bit more. Get light in here. Boom. There we go. You can see it all. The ECU's up there. Got the um, CAN bus connection coming out of it, going to the uh, Y band. Then the Y band goes to the gauge, which is installed there. We've got the other CAN connection going down here, which goes to the rest of the car. And back down here, we have some wires I uh, crimped into connectors and plugged in for the throttle body. And as you can see, I've just kind of covered all that up because it's not the nicest. It also stops people from kicking them because uh, I'm not massively confident in those connections. Got the fuse box. Yeah, it all fits in here nicely. It's obviously looks like a bit of a uh, bit of a crow's nest in terms of just wires everywhere. But I've tried to make it as tidy as I can, uh, you know, without having to force anything into place. So it's all it's all quite it's all quite tight in there. But that's how it is. Then the knock sensors, or sorry, the O2 sensors come down here. They root around the gear stick and they drop down here. And I'm just going to have them kind of go through the rubber gator of the gear stick and tie them up there and they go down to the O2 sensors. So that's all the wiring. So as you saw, I've got a couple more things I need to do. Tidy up, connect, and then start programming the ECU, letting it know it's in a GTA 6, getting a few other things done. I've got that loose wire down there just in case I need to run it to the fuel pump. The fuel pump controller's behind that bit of interior trim back there. So I might need to run it around up to that. There's a few other bits I might need to do as well things like cruise control and so on, but they're probably projects for uh, the winter or even next year, because obviously cruise control isn't absolutely necessary, but it is nice. So there we have it. I think I've got a couple more bits before I can get the, before I can get the inlet manifold on and plug in the rest of those connections. I need to finish off the uh, clutch master here. As you can see, I've got a new one. It's a Tilton 75. I've mounted it upside down, which hopefully doesn't bite me in the ass later. But as you can see, it's a lot that's kind of a representation of the firewall and it's a lot more buried in there. Um, obviously just need to cut down the rod there, um, get them mounted, and then I might be able to finalize having the uh, inlet manifold installed. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to wrap up here. I'm going to do a couple of bits off camera, also need to measure the line length for that, uh, get that installed, and then get the starter installed, get that alternator cable lengthened, and then perhaps next episode I can fill it with fluids, perhaps even turn the key, or press the button, sorry, get it running. So as you just heard, guys, that's where I'm going to end today's episode. Uh, might have been a bit of a short one. Don't know yet. I haven't obviously edited the footage to work out how long it's going to be. This might be part one of two. Uh, next episode, we might be hearing the starter motor kick in, building oil pressure, and perhaps starting the car. I'm really not sure yet. So much to do still. We're just at the stage where there's a, all these tiny little jobs that just take so long, but I want to do it right the first time rather than revisit things later. I've already got a list of tasks I'm pushing off to the winter, things like getting the aircon uh, working. Obviously, it's not really necessary coming into autumn now. There's also a few other little jobs for the winter, heat management, things like that. I'm a little bit worried about some components getting a bit too hot, uh, burning through coolant lines and so on. Uh, but, you know, it's, I've done as much as I can currently to avoid that, but you really can't tell until the car's running and driving and you work out these issues down the road, as well as a few other little things. But like I say, that's where we're getting into this episode. So hope you enjoyed. Uh, hope you're as excited as I am to start cracking into the ECU, getting it started, getting it programmed, fiddling with a few little settings and getting the car running. I'm really looking forward to it. Had a little goal in mind for uh, early November, but I just don't think I'm gonna be able to reach that. So it'll probably be mid to late November, the car's running and driving, MOT insurance and so on. But that's that. Yeah, there we go. So as I always say, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below what you think, how excited you are for uh, uh, the next three episodes, and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a good one. Cheers. Bye for now.